Howdy everybody in YouTube land. This is part four of the Macintosh TV Resurrection Restoration series. Now we're going to take a look at the logic board. So one thing we've noticed right away on this logic board is the capacitors have already been removed. Which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. And the reason why is the problem is that the information available on the internet that shows a picture of this board along with the values of the capacitors no longer exist because a lot of the websites at least one of the main websites I used to use as a resource is gone and archive.org had a problem archiving some of the images so the information for this particular motherboard is gone so unfortunately I don't have the data so I had to go online onto forums and ask questions for people that did these boards in the past because I've, I've never worked on one of these actually that's not true I think I've worked on one but it's been over 10 years ago so um, I don't remember the details but that person did have the information along with the capacitors that, that go in here so I think most of these are 47s, one of these is a 100, and there might be a, oh, a 1 microfarad or 10 microfarad or something in here, but I'm not entirely certain. Um, one thing I noticed right away is there's some corrosion on here that appears to have been from a previous cleaning attempt. Uh, it's still kind of dirty anyways, but you can see the corrosion down in here. So I wanted to clean this up the best I possibly can. I'm probably just going to use the uh, good old toothbrush and flux off cleaner stuff um, and try to clean that off. I did not get the tuner board. I don't know where it is. Uh, I think, if I recall, the person that I got this from actually left a comment on that channel. Um, oh man, that smells like cap juice. There was some right on that chip. So I got to wash this board. So. I think the original owner did contact me and say that he might have the tuner module still. I don't know. I don't recall. I have to look back in my chat history and see. But, yeah. Uh, so, we have to recap this board. The other thing I wanted to make a mention of, too, and everybody's probably going to run into this problem eventually, is these grounding lugs. Well, these grounding lugs are important because without them, you could have issues with missing sound or other spontaneous problems and if you notice they're starting to fall off and become loose so this one is loose now and this one's loose these are actually soldered down so um, if you're not careful when the solder breaks you will lose them and when you do you're going to wonder why the sound doesn't work and you're going to beat your head against the wall to find out why well that's why so I have to find these or go find a parts board and replace these and solder them back down so um, let's do that now before we wash the board because the last thing I want to do is lose these when I'm trying to wash the board. So we'll go ahead and warm up the soldering iron, grab the fan. That's my exhaust fan. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get the ground lugs soldered back on that and hope I can find this when I gotta look in my parts bin because it's been a while since I've taken that machine apart so I have to look over and see if I have that and we'll install that and we'll get it all soldered down actually disregard the last message these are spring steels and they won't solder so what I did do was I cleaned them up and I re I added some fresh solder to the pads on the bottom and then stuck the spring clips back in here so they're the connection should be good on those now. But yeah, they don't solder. I thought they did for some reason. Anyways, my bad. I got it all taken care of now though. So that way we don't have to worry about it. So the next point here is I need to clean off the board. Especially these areas here. And uh, start getting my capacitors out. And seeing what I have on hand. So I grabbed the flux cleaner and the toothbrush. Which is just like an acetone mix. Uh, I scrubbed it the best I could. It's not perfect. There's some corrosion in here, but I wanted to pay more attention to what's going on over here. So, this stuff is heavily corroded. So, what I'm 
thinking I'm going to do is I'm either going to remove these chips and clean them, or... Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm either going to remove them and clean them, or I'm going to add some flux to that, and I'm going to heat it up with the uh, hot air tool and see if I can't refresh that solder and flow some of that in, because that's going to cause issues. So I'm going to clean up all that oxidation and corrosion next and see... Um, what we can do with that. The other thing too is back here, there was two more capacitors. I did clean it up, but it leaked. And when it did, it kind of did some damage to that egret or CUDA chip. So I'm hoping that comes good, but we'll see. It's pretty heavily corroded as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean that up too, I think. So, okay. Um, Alright, let's uh let's get busy. Let's get to it and see if we can't do anything with that stuff. I'm debating whether or not to run this in my cleaner. Hmm. Maybe I should do that first and then work with it. So yeah, let's let's uh wash this board up really good, get it squeaky clean, and then we'll then we'll work with it. So I did some scrubbing, cleaning, and drying. It's still not perfect. There's still some uh, minerals and salts deposits. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to mess with this chip, but the next thing I'm going to do is what I try to do to clean this up the best I can, short of removing the chip, is I like to get some flux in the pins here. And just, you know, use that to help absorb some of the nonsense just like so nothing doesn't have to be perfect this is my technique there's many other ways to do it the best way to do it is just to remove the chip and clean it up and put it back on but you know again as we've seen earlier in the video we're polishing a turd here so there's only so much one can do Just gonna reflow all these. Try to burn the oxidation out with the flux. It will work to a degree. It's not perfect, but it will work. All right, so that's done. Now, this is the soldering reflow thing that I typically use. If you saw the Omnibook video, this is uh, what I use. So. What we're gonna do now is just turn this guy on and slowly work at this and then let it reflow. So we'll be back in a bit. So unfortunately, I had to remove the chips because they were just, there's too much corrosion, there was too much, all that stuff. So I wanted to remove the chips I'm let, waiting for the board to cord, cool down now, so I'm gonna, I, I remove the chips, I'm gonna clean the board up, clean all these solder joints up, and then we're going to just re-solder those chips back on once I get them all cleaned up. That way I know, I feel better that everything's off the board that needs to be off the board. Um, I may replace this out of precaution, I doubt it's bad, but I got a bunch of them on hand anyways. Uh, you know, I'll play it by ear, but we'll see. But let's let the board cool down and clean all this crap up. Now that I have all the chips removed and I got the flux cleaned off a little bit, uh, I went through with the desoldering braid and cleaned all the excess solder off the pads, but I want to take a quick look at uh, some of these traces that were routed around the capacitors and I can definitely see some spots where things are questionable. Like, um, see here, it's hard to tell, but there's one there, it comes down, there's a spot there. And there's a spot there so I definitely need to while I have this apart clean all this up with some q-tips and I'm going to meter some of this out and make sure that the connections are actually still good on here so and the good thing is with the chips removed I can see the traces that run up underneath them so I'm gonna take a reference photo and know what's there so when I do some measurements and there's an open connection I can find it so I took the Q-tips and cleaned off the flux a little bit more and I can definitely see now 
where some of these traces are just eaten. There's a couple there next to the uh, capacitors where the pad's starting to lift off. Um, there's one there towards the end here that needs looked at. There's a couple where it gets really bad is over here. So you can see where the trace is kind of hard to tell. There we go. Uh, you can tell here where the traces are kind of clean and then they just go to hell right there, there, and there. There's a bad, there's a bad connection there possibly, maybe up here. So these chips had to come off anyways. Uh, there's a couple there that need checked. So I think the next course of action is to remove the socket um, so I can look at where the traces run underneath. And I want to remove this and replace it anyways. And then we're going to, um, yeah, check all that out and write, it, write any open connections down if there is. All right, now that I have the connector removed, thanks to that tool there, we can get a quick look at what we're dealing with and figure out where some of these traces go. Um, we got a couple of vias here, one there, and then the one that runs up through there. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit, and then we're going to we're going to check all these connections and see if there are any that are broken. All right. So now that we have the uh, camera situated here, let's uh, clean the board a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Things about empty. This thing's bad. Oh yeah, that's just in our boards. A little bit of acid corrosion damage from the bat or from not the battery, but from the um Oh, why is it escaping me? The cap juice, that's it. Alright. Okay, so let's see, what do we have here? So between here and here. So that snakes all the way up to here. That one's good. Here. And good. All that stuff's good. What about here to here? Not good. I don't know. I just didn't get a bite on it, I guess. Here to here. Good. Here to here. Good. Quite frankly, I'm amazed. That's good. So let's chase. I don't know where that one's going. I think it's going there. So between here. Scratch off some of the solder paste. And okay, that's good. And then here. Here, 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 here. So you come around to here. That one's good too. I'm amazed. Alright, so those are good. From here to here. Good. From here to here. Good. From there to there. Good. Here to here. 
Come on, maybe that one's broke. No, that was good. Okay, from here to here. Good. Okay, so that's the major ones out of the way. Here to here. Good. So yeah, um really. And they look dodgy, but they're still connected. So I think we're uh we're done here. Um yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. We're gonna clean up these chips here and then we're gonna put them back in place and I think that's gonna be it for this. And then we'll just continue recapping and restoring it. Actually, I wanna check back here. Oh, there's a bad one. Yeah, I gotta check that one. That one's not bad, but this one is. Especially there. There's a... I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but right there. You can see it. But where is it going is the question. I guess we're going to find out. Because it goes under that apple chip, which goes between the CUDA and that one. Yeah, we're good. Alright, so we're done. We're going to go ahead and uh, move on with this. We're going to put the chips back into place. Everything should be good, so... All right, so I have the chips reinstalled. I did measure everything out, and it, nothing was broken, so I got lucky there. So I have all the chips reinstalled, and the flux cleaned off the best I possibly could. There might be a little bit of a booger there, but that's not a big deal. So chips are reinstalled. Now it's just a matter of looking up the capacitors, but guess what? At least it's not corroded anymore. I used my sanding block to clean up the pins and resolder all down so as long as the chips are still good I think we're all right so the next thing is to find the information on which capacitors go where and we'll get those ready plus I want to replace this regulator like I said I was going to got the old one over there and then we'll reinstall that connector and everything should be good so the information that was sent to me was identified as that being a 100 microfarad at 25 these are two 10 microfarad at 16 volts and these two are 47 microfarad at 16 volts so that's normal I got those I may have these and I have these somewhere so we're gonna go ahead and get her done I wanted to go with um, all solid capacitors but unfortunately I didn't have this particular 100 microfarad so I didn't have a choice but I did get these two replaced and I got these two replaced so that's it for this thing. I'm going to put this back on, solder it back in place, and then um, we're going to test it, I think. We'll just do a quick power up and see how everything works at this point. All right, there's only so much I can do to get this in the frame because the table literally ends right here. I can't set a, a tripod on the floor beside me, although I should. I can't because I don't have one. But for now, it's time to get everything put back in here and get tested, at least. So it's time to put in the um, analog board. Make sure everything is in place here. Okay. 
that's all in there. Let's get everything all wired up. So let's see. Come on. It would help to open it up, Mike. All right. Go with that one. Carefully. Get everything maneuvered in the place around here. So, I'm going to plug this guy in here. If I can actually, uh, you know, get it in the hole, because uh, it's not wanting to work or cooperate. There we go. That's now installed in there, which you can't even see it. It's not even in the frame, but... Alright, so... Let's plug the yoke connector in. Yoke connector's plugged in. Let's do... that out of the way. Plug the CRT neck board in. And then the next thing we have to do is the grounds. Figuring out the best way to do the grounds. I think it goes in the yeah, it goes here at the very top. Which again you can't see. It goes in there. Then that leaves the flyback transformer, which is this guy here. We're gonna install that towards the top. done. So that is complete. I do not know how this was originally. I couldn't tell you. So now, without further ado, we got the analog board installed. Everything is secured. The only left now is our recapped motherboard and cleaned up motherboard. So we'll slide this in here but why won't it go in the slot hole there we go had to tilt it for a little bit all right so now let's make sure that's not shorting out it might be I can't really tell. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, actually, what I want to do to prevent that from causing me grief, to prevent. There we go. Good enough. So now I need the power cord down here on the floor you know where everything else is in my house is on the floor technically everything is on the floor turn the switch off let's plug this in let's see if we get any let's see if it uh, blows up I heard a chirp which means it started up so the one thing I need now is a um Turn that off. I need a, a, a keyboard, so let me go get a keyboard real quick. Alright. Keyboard is just one of these Apple design keyboards, and I like the way this one types. Not all of them are the same. Some of these are just real mushy. This one actually types well. It's got different key switches in it. It's a rubber dome, I'm sure, but let's see. Man, we got something going on here. Huh. Kind of noisy. Probably a bad ground. But it's actually working. So let's see here. It's very noisy. Yeah, we got a... And it's very red. 
CRT might be a little on the weak side. But that is certainly a start. Let's see. Power off. Got sound at least. Hear that noise? That is like a ground. That's weird. Shouldn't do that. I'll have to investigate that one. But for a first power up after a quick recap and resolder job, that's not bad. So what we've learned so far is this particular board, it works fine now but there's a lot of noise coming from the audio so I plugged my headphones in and I found out that all the noise is originating in the right channel left channel is clean I get system sound out of both channels but the right channel has got a lot of digital noise and one thing I noticed is I've checked all the grounds because we we know that grounding can be an issue between the main chassis and the logic board especially at the various points um, this doesn't use a split ground system. I checked it all. They're all the same ground and it's all good back to the analog board. So that's not my problem. What I did notice is if I stick my finger in there and I, you know, kind of poke around with my finger, I can get a really loud 60 Hertz buzz out of the right channel. So there's clearly an open connection. The trouble is the schematic to this board is not known. So trying to find that broken connection is going to be like a needle in a haystack and I'm not sure if it's the TV audio that's open and it's just picking up noise or what it's not the system audio it, it's got to be the TV audio but I'm not entirely certain on that front so what I got to try to do is figure out okay where the open connection is and what I've discovered so far is this is the video processor this is uh, like I, I forget what it is um but it's something to do with the tv this this chip here is a car audio chip it's actually the uh bass treble tone and rear front fade control why they would use that in this i have no idea but this takes a left and right input and gives you a four channel output left right rear left right front but they might just be using it for simple bass tone treble and all of that um, why they need that level of sophistication I don't know but that's what that chip does so the problem is on the right side and it's the right side that had all of the eaten traces and I did check those and didn't find anything so I'm going to need to check all of these resistors and capacitors where it goes into the LM324 which is a quad op amp this is a MUX this is an analog MUX a 4053 there's also one on the back side I need to check those and make sure there's no opens to any of these passives because if there is, that's a good spot to get noise in there. I can put my finger here and I get a ton of noise in the right audio and barely any noise in the left audio. So there's clearly an issue here. I can take my finger and touch these these RCA jacks and get a ton of noise in the, the right audio. So there's an open circuit. I don't know if it's an open ground or if it's an open signal wire. I suppose what I could do is get the machine up and get the audio in here and put it in TV mode and see if I'm missing the right channel audio because if I am, there you go. But I don't have the tuner board. So the tuner board could be very well a cause of this because there's open connections here. So, But you would think it'd be effective on both channels. I don't know. But we gotta get to the bottom of it and it's gonna be fun all right so here's what i found so far um this is a high impedance j fet or junction fet um op amp stereo you got this side and you have this side and then these were the two 47 microfarad capacitors um that leak but they're also the input coupling capacitors into this j fet op amp the problem is I can see some eaten traces here and remember we tested these and they looked good but there's a problem and you're going to see that here in a second as soon as I get the tripod set up so we can measure it now that we have everything in frame we should be able to see the problem so 
here's what we're going to do. So this is the input side. The non, this is the non-inverting input. The inverting input's grounded. So if I measure the inverted input, it's grounded. If I measure the inverting input on this side, it's also grounded. So that one shouldn't be. All right, it's not. So that's what we have so far. Now, if I take the positive input here and measure to this capacitor, it's connected. If I take the positive input over here and measure to this capacitor, it's not connected. It's open. So the funny thing is, if I measure the via that's here, push down on it and measure it to the pin, it's not open. It's good. But if I also measure to the capacitor, it's also good. But if I let off that via and measure between the capacitor and the chip, it's bad. So that's, that's what fooled me because when I checked this earlier, I didn't see a problem. But if I clearly, if I measure from the cap to this pin, it's open circuit. It's just, it's just open. So let me uh, get this board in view so it's easier to see. Um, yeah, I measure from this cap to here. So we'll measure from the capacitor and we'll measure to here. It's open circuit. There's nothing there. It's just, it's open. But if I measure at the via here and push on the via, it's not open anymore. So when I was pushing on the via, it was making the circuit. So I had to clear it off and, oh, come on, power saver. Uh, and then, yeah, so what I have to do is turn that on. Now, what I got to do is I got to make a patch wire. So basically this via is open internally through the board. Um, when I'm not pushing on it, the, the connection is, is, uh, you know, connections open. But as soon as I push on it, like if I were, if I rest my probe on the via, there's nothing there. As soon as I push on the via, boom, it makes a connection. That via is broken. So, that one got me, and those are the ones that you have to watch out for. So what we're going to do now is we're going to patch that via. And we're going to do that on video since this is a quick little video. So we're going to patch the via, but before I can, I need to get the um, wire that I need, my Kynar wire. Let's grab a little piece of wire. I don't need anything special here. Only a little piece of wire. 30 gauge Kynar if anyone's curious what it actually is. Okay. That's it for that. Now, let's actually fix this properly. Or we'll try to anyways. All right, um, I need my exhaust fan. Strip of wire. I don't have a stripper for these. Another way to do this is just to use your soldering iron and heat them up. But I'm just trying to barely, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. So we'll make a jump wire from there to here. Since that wire is so short now, I can't trust the stripper. So I'm going to do this by heating up the end of the wire here and melting the insulation off like that. So I can tin this wire. 
then I can attach the wire right to the IC. Just like that. The wire's done. So, in theory, as long as I didn't short anything out, this connection here should be good. This connection here should be good. We're good. Now, that would definitely create a noise problem because on the other side of this board is a couple of resistors in that same circuit. That's part of the feedback network um, on an op amp. So that non-inverting input pin was just wide open. And if you get wide open, that's basically infinity gain. I mean, well, um, there's, there's only so much gain the chip can handle, but in an ideal electronic circuit, when you run mathematics, it's literally, you know, wide open loop gain. So it's going to pick up every single thing in the world that it possibly can, which is where all the noise is coming from, in theory. So now we'll move this out of the way because it's going to be easier to work with. We're going to test it. One final test. One final test of this board. See if I can't get this positioned in a better spot. There we go. Put the board in with the uh, newly made patch wire over here. Grab our power cord. Keyboard. Put that in there. Switch on. All right. Let's see if we have any noise. Let's hope not. Imagine that. Noise is gone. No more noise. So there we have it. That is fixed. As I suspected, it was an open connection. I thought it was an open ground, but it's not an open ground. So that's good. No open ground. It was literally an open non-inverting input to the JFET op amp. So, all right. Well, that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to work on the next installment, which is going to be the drives. So we're going to work on the drives next. So in the meantime, thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment if you have one. And hit the like button, subscribe button. And if you want to participate in the Discord, the link is below in the video description. Until next time.